Hi everyone, I'm Jana and I'm the co-founder and host of the Kind Community Show. And today we are hearing from the story of Ryan Shannon, the managing director of BAM Bamboo Clothing. With a vast background in business and marketing, Ryan has pivoted from building his own agency to leading what he believes could become the most recognizable, sustainable activewear brand. Let's dive in and learn more about BAM and its origins and Ryan's own relationship with sustainability. Hi, Ryan. Thanks for joining us today. Hi. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. So, um, so Ryan, before we get started on, on bamboo clothing, um, could you tell us a, a little bit more about your personal introduction to sustainability? And has looking after the world always been at the forefront of your mind? Or was there a specific experience that drew you to the world of climate positivity? Um, I'd like to say I had sort of a, an epiphany, but um, I don't think, I think like most people, lot, you know, if I put myself rather than a businessman, but as a consumer, you know, the, the, it's been a gradual uh, awareness and increase in terms of climate change and impact impact on the planet that 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 we're having um and so as a marketeer i think uh it's certainly been a much heightened topic um you know in the last 10 years i would say and the last two years especially um but prior to joining bam like you say i had i was involved in my own marketing agency and certainly was part of a lot of conversations with brands about how are they going to address the sustainability messaging within their branding? Um, and, you know, let's face it, a lot of businesses did not have that as part of who they were as a business. And it was about creating uh, a sustainability angle or understanding what their impact was. So that was my first real sort of commercial view of sustainability was it being identified identified by brands as, as something that was going to become increasingly important and how are they going to deal with it um and so and then you know if i take myself out of the business you know like everyone you know we increasingly followed stories you know david attenborough has done a huge amount to engage a much wider audience in his stories if i go to the apparel uh, section you know stacy dooley's uh documentary on the impact of, of denim uh, production you know all of these things have just built a a wave of um, uh, of increased heightened awareness, um, and then you know, so I certainly wouldn't have put myself as a sustainability, you know, leader, or um, and I'm probably my interest was more commercial than than and. But having said that, you know, I travel extensively. You know, I am interested in in wildlife and understand the fine balance of ecosystems and how they need to be protected. So. Um, yeah, that that that's sort of my my history of sustainability. Um, but obviously, when I joined BAM, that's when my knowledge really, really increased and my understanding of it. Um, and so, um, and what I, what having just I talked earlier about, you know, been part of a lot of discussions with big brands and about how they were going to deal with this sustainability pressure. You know, one of the reasons uh, you know I, I I chose to work with BAM is I recognised that they had a sustainability in their dna from the start you know it was part of the reason why dave gordon set the business up and so you know that's been fantastic in that it's it's not been about creating that story it's been about um elevating and understanding how you know what that story is and building on that mm, yeah i you know because i the founder of uh, band clothing david gordon he, he believes strongly in the idea of businesses can be viable and sustainable and it's nice to see success stories like BAM thriving um, without damaging the environment. It, it sets an example for others and it proves that sustainability is always a valid option. But Ryan, what is it that makes BAM so successful? What is it about BAM's formula that makes it unique? And how could other clothing brands or apparel brands adopt this? Yeah, and it's an interesting question. Yeah, as you said, Dave, um, he he is quite. A, he, he was much more of an explorer or a, a person who in, got, got involved in expeditions, and his awareness of the planet was certainly well ahead of mine and well ahead of the market. To be honest, um, he sort of 
discovered in inverted commas bamboo as a, as a fabric um, on one of his expeditions or one of his travels and thought there was you know something in it in terms of uh, not just the quality that, of the fabric but also the sustainability side to the story and uh, you know is a for a number of reasons it grows naturally it grows in on land that's not necessarily of great use for any other purpose so it's not uh, taking away food production um, it, it as I say it grows naturally it doesn't need pesticides doesn't need irrigation and, and water um, as well as the fact that it grows really quickly and and actually unlike trees or um, you know, when you cut uh, a bamboo stick down uh, the majority of carbon that's absorbed by the by the by the plant remains in the ground you know 70 percent of the carbon is locked into the root system so for those reasons he sort of thought there's something in this and um you know decided to uh, launch a clothing company based on bamboo as its primary uh, uh raw material and, and yarn um and so you know and and then but that's sort of one aspect of it and remains central to obviously the brand you know we're called bamboo clothing um but dave was 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 in the early days actually found that um it was harming the business by talking and this is 2006 so you know 15 years ago sustainability was was becoming a thing but wasn't yet a thing and i think in consumers minds buying sustainable product meant a more expensive but inferior product which wasn't necessarily true and so dave actually dialed back the sustainability messaging in those early days but it in in the business and within him it was still very strong um and then, you know, fast forward uh, to where we are today, um, you know, suddenly the consumers have become ultimately more aware. Um, and sustainability, you know, ironically, we're just now talking internally about that's not even, you know, that's not good enough anymore. We want to be a regenerative business. We want to be a circular business, you know. Um, but, you know, to stay on topic, you know, let's 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 keep using the word sustainability. Um, but also, in terms, you, you said earlier that, that Dave, you know, wanted to prove that you could be a... Uh, sustainable but viable business and i think that by by taking that stance it, it involved more than just what your raw materials were and it involved more than just your carbon footprint and climate you know there was there was whole things around production around use of chemicals use of water you know how people were treated in our business but also in our supply chain um and and increasingly you know how much of our product at the end of its life is recycled versus end up in landfill you know, you know, you know, if you anywhere between 75 and 85 percent, depending on which report you read of clothing ends up in landfill. And that is not you know, that is not sustainable by any stretch of the imagination. So, you know. Being proving that you can be a viable and successful business is much more than just, you know, the, the, what most people think is sustainable, which is, you know, which is probably around, related around uh, carbon and, and climate. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think back then, like really early on in the stage, uh, sustainability as a, like a sales or marketing message probably would do more damage than it than it than it would be would do today. And and I think nowadays we're seeing more brands adding these green or sustainable words to sell more when they're not actually you know greenwashing. I guess right. So um, yeah. yeah, and and yeah. having you know we we decided that you know to maybe three years ago now that the time was right to maybe start to elevate our BAM story and sustainable message. Um, but before we did that, we invested a huge amount of time, resource, money in challenging our own belief of where we were as a business across all of those things. Like I say, you know, is bamboo this sort of uh, sustainable um, raw material? Great to say it is, um, you know, do we know enough about our supply chain to be certain that 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 it's operating ethically and 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 following best practice? You know, so we've had to trace trace that. Um, do we understand, you know, what's happening with our clothes and where, and where we and what we're having to do is is put things in place where they maybe don't exist to help our customers and help our supply chain improve how they behave. Um, and so, you know, that. I, I, I completely concur with with what you're saying in that there are some headline grabbing you know things that businesses do. Um, what I know is that some of those don't actually make the biggest difference. And so being transparent about what we our total 
uh, impact on the planet um mm. enables us to justify why we're you know we haven't necessarily done something that looks really obvious because actually in the great scheme of things uh you know it's um yeah, it's, it, there's other there's other priorities that we believe will have a greater impact and where we do do things we want to make sure we do them right so for example obviously we're we're working hard with our supply chain to reduce uh their use of non-renewable energy or increase their use of re renewable energy but until they do that we've we've said we would offset our uh, carbon footprint um and so we've measured it but you know rather than measuring what the BAM carbon footprint is, we've we've measured with the help of others the footprint that from the moment that the bamboo is harvested in the bamboo forests to the point where each garment we send into the marketplace can be washed up to 50 times. What is that full carbon footprint? And we've then offset that amount of carbon because we're trying to take responsibility for the impact that BAM has, not just within its own business, but but by being around, by operating, by being a growing business. And so, you know, and and, and that, you know, that whereas other businesses, I'm sure I've I've seen and will say, you know, oh, we've changed all our energy to renewable. But what they mean by that is their head office now works on renewable energy, not, you know, not the entire uh, purpose of the, or impact that their whole business is having. Mm. Mm, I agree, and I think I think that step is important. But also, you know, you could go so so much further. This, people talk about scope one, scope scope two, scope three, um, and I think if you start lifting the hood on a few of these messages and commitments, uh, things that things are better than they were, but there's still a, a long journey to go with, mm -hmm. with, with with many many of us. We we feel that BAM does a great job of conveying its message, and I get the impression that it truly lives the lifestyle and the culture it caters for. Ryan, are you one of one for expeditions and reconnecting with nature? What aspects of BAM do you feel you connect most with? Um, yeah, it's interesting. I, I certainly expeditions may be a bit extreme, but certainly travel until these last few years was was a really you know important part. Um, experiencing other cultures, seeing you know. Uh, seeing nature and you know that's an important part and, and highly interesting to me um i guess more recently you know uh, or or during the last couple of years people have taken a lot more responsibility for their own well-being whether that's mental health you know we're obviously heavily involved in the active wear sector things like yoga are a big category for us you know we've seen the growth in those sorts of activities and um it's probably encouraged me to to take a bit more responsibility as well um but I think the other, from a from a sort of rather than an activity, you know, one of the things we we're talking about sustainability at, at, at Bamboo is that we don't want to become campaigners. We don't want to become preachy. We're not going to criticise people for life choices that they take. Um, what we want to do is encourage and enable people to lead a more sustainable uh, life through through their clothing choices. Um, so we're giving them an option. You know, but it's not about criticizing people who don't take that option. Um, and it's not about uh, like I say, being preachy about it. There's enough people in this space that 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 fulfill that role. Personally, I find that, you know, can sometimes be a disincentive. You know, people just think, oh, it doesn't matter what I do, it doesn't make a difference, so I'll just do nothing. Um, so you know, we want to encourage and support everybody's little change in behavior um and celebrate that and hopefully collectively that'll start to make uh, make a bigger difference yeah t totally i i hear you there's enough finger pointing in the world right? yeah so. and that suits my personality you know I'd, I'd much rather you know we we sort of we don't take ourselves too seriously even though we're 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 yeah there's a very serious topic at the heart of our brand you know um mm. we, we appreciate that it has to uh you know life life has to be enjoyed as well as uh, something that we take responsibility for. What would BAM's statement be in response to the recent IPCC report? And you know, what course of action would you like to see businesses take in the future? Yeah, I think um, it's just it's just another reinforcement of you know the severity of the point we're at in time, um, and so you know. I, I can't believe anybody's not aware of it, um, but you know when when something as authoritative like that spells it out so clearly as to what the impact is, you know it's just we've just got to get everybody uh, thinking about their own 
uh, actions that they can take. Um, so, you know, uh, and I know, you know, I've probably, we're having a conversation now. I've probably had more conversations in the last 12 months than I'd had in the previous two, three years. I know my colleagues have as well. You know, this is a topic that really does seem to have gained momentum now. Um, one of the things that that I've been talking about recently is, I don't. I think for for the I mean, if I concentrate on the apparel business, you know, we're one of the the, the worst offending uh, sectors. So quite rightly, the spotlight is, is on us. Um, I hope what this report does is shows the scale of the issue and that actually no one of us is going to cure it on our own. And you know, I've started talking about you know the stuff that we're doing in sustainability. I don't necessarily do it to gain a competitive advantage. You know, I'm willing. We're willing to share our information, be transparent, because I believe that the scale of the issue is only going to be overcome if we work collaboratively. So I hope the brands start to think like that and don't sort of start to think, oh, well, we need to do it, and if we do it quickly, we can get a competitive advantage over our. You know, it, it's too late for that. We need to be more collaborative. We need to look for big solutions that no one business wants to invest in or own. You know, it needs to be a concerted not just a uh, brand effort, but supply chain effort and, and everything else. So I hope, you know, on a, on a, on a bigger scale that, that that report leads to people beginning to think like that um, and, and not lose sight of, of what we're trying to achieve here. Yeah. We, we are all for collaboration over competition here at kind community. So we echo your, your response there. I think it's, it's about time we saw that, uh, comp that collaboration to, to build a more just and sustainable future. And what ethical practices do you have in place to encourage sustainability or rege re re regeneration of people as, as well as the planet at BAM? And, and what standards of work-life work -life balance um, mm -hmm. that perhaps you could pass on to other businesses? Um, I've slightly been disrupted for the last two years, to be honest. I mean, um, you know, we, um, you know, with a lot it, it, with a lot of people working from home uh, over the last two years um we've you know and, and how we're now gonna possibly return to the office some sort of hybrid model you know so you know people have benefited or some people have benefited greatly from that more flexible working and so we will definitely sort of you know um we we'll be we will be a changed business coming back into uh, or back out of this period um you know that if i think more widely across the business there are things uh, you know we signed up Two years ago now to be uh, the real living wage um so that you know that's a commitment to within our own business to pay uh you know rather than just the minimum wage that the, the real living wage um and that's a that's a baked in commitment to our business now and now we're talking to our supply chain about how can we deploy those same principles throughout um throughout the supply chain um as part of our, our sort of people goals um coming back to this collaboration thing um you know uh, we all hear the horror stories of 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 some of the sort of practices that happen in the supply chain um we are starting to work with an organization called fairware who who will audit um uh, suppliers in our sector um and make sure that they are uh, treating people fairly not you know no health and safety issues no bad practices again you know we could do that we can audit our own supply chain but it's it's much more efficient and effective if some you know if a third party organisation can can do it on our behalf, um, and sort of some of the softer things you know that that um, you know just making sure that 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 we're aware of how people's workloads are you know all all businesses are seasonal um, there are peaks and troughs um, you know we need to, and trying to stay on top of making sure that we have sufficient resource in the teams. And that we're not putting any undue pressure and and, and working practices. Um, I think I was saying I was just at a at a conference today, and uh, one of the speakers was a wellness director for for one of the suppliers, and uh, he he had us all doing exercises that you could do at your desk. And so that made me think, you know, yeah, we you know large part of our our, our team spend days in front of a computer, sat at their desk, and and you know when you hear someone like that talk authoritatively around. Just what small differences, you know? What did he call them? Um, it was going to have a movement break rather than a lunch break, and so yeah, and that's and 
so that, um, inevitably things like that will start to come into the working community so uh, and, and i'm open to that sort of thing yeah i i've personally found um stand i don't know if you could see now but standing up desks uh for me personally really mm-hmm. help can be un- uncomfortable to start off with but actually i think you know, for us as humans sitting down probably isn't the best thing to do all day having plants scattered in and around the house the office um and just having having a bit of time just to get outside in, in into nature if you can um away from digital um and our screens really does help um and and, and on to that does does BAM do anything to offset its digital consumption? And if not, would you would you be interested in doing so? Um, if by digital consumption you mean uh, the sort of carbon, in, you know, the carbon uh, that we produce by being a, a web-based in-commerce business, then yeah, like I think I, I said to you before, we've, we've measured our carbon footprint and that was very much part of it. Um, and so um, now, obviously, our goal like a lot of companies goals is to get to the point where that doesn't have a impact you know that it's zero or or um zero impact and but until and we can't do that on our own you know we provide it with like all businesses we, we we rely on other service providers but working with those service service providers choosing the right service provider um you know we would want to minimize or eradicate those those impacts and you know not just yeah, not just in terms of our digital impact. Though I admit that's an interesting question because I think a lot of people think the internet is carbon free. Um and and yeah, I mean it's probably more efficient than driving into a shop or um but you know there are there is there is a server somewhere supporting this conversation and that yeah. server is being run, cooled, um and so there, you know, there clearly is an impact, and uh, we need to, to understand what that is uh, and make sure we're dealing with it. And um, yeah, at the moment, that's through through an offsetting project. Um, Wonderful. And uh, uh, but in the future, you know, we will work with people that have the best solutions in that space and from an impact point of view. Fantastic! It's something that certainly us here um, at Kind Community, being predominantly an online community but also our digital growth agency kind studios we're very much aware of um the impact that we have in our real lives you know what we put in and on our bodies how far we travel and the digital well now that we went digital because of covid and lockdown um and digital is only growing you know initial kind of research and data suggests that um the ICT, the you know, digital, is now emitting more greenhouse gases than the entire aviation industry, and we feel that it's just not being spoken about enough. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's something that we would love to, you know, as I say, if it's not being spoken about, why are we not? Let's speak about it, and hence why we're in these in these conversations. And and, and, and it's say, interesting because on that topic, you know, um, we still use catalog um, as part of our marketing, uh, and quite often people will ask us, you know, will you know you're using paper and that can't be, you know, but actually the paper industry, you know, all of our cycle, we use recycled paper. We use paper that can be recycled. It's FSC. Um, you know, if you look at actually the, the, the paper uh, side of that, um, you know, the amount of trees that the paper industry plant, you know, I'm not saying it's perfect, but actually it's impact compared, you know, we never get picked up on where you've sent some emails and that's generated some electric, you know, electrical current somewhere that's been generated. And, but we do get, you know, we do get questioned over whether we should be doing uh, paper-based marketing. And and I've, you know, I feel comfortable that the way we approach it um, is, is you know, in the most sustainable way that it that it can be. Um, and, and actually, if you, I think the paper industry has not been great at fighting that or making that case um, like I say, you know, the, the 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 feeling is that digital stuff is 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 carbon free. But you know, it, if you actually did a scientific study on the two, I'm not sure it would come out in favour of that argument. Yeah, you, you're t- you're totally right, and I think one of the things that is problematic in this space is that you you can't grasp the cloud. You know, you can't physically see it. Whereas a magazine, a catalogue. It's physical. You can you can picture it. You can actually mm-hmm. feel the weight. Whereas if someone says, "Oh well, this email has the same carbon, co- like it's four grams of CO two, 
Mm-hmm. Well, what what is CO two? How much is four grams? Is it this much? Is it this? You know, so yeah. um, that's that's the thing. When we're talking about these things that we can't see, what is the cloud? It's something that we can't grasp, and therefore it's it's starting to creep up on us. And we're seeing, you know, emails as as, as widely used as they are globally, and that's still a market that's growing about three percent year mm-hmm. on year. So you're going to have like four point five billion people using emails um, pretty soon, and that you know, sending a third of a trillion emails a day, that is going to have some sort of cost. And if we're not having that conversation, sooner or later, it's going to, it's going to come back um, and, mm. and, and bite us on the ass. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I, th- I think for us, it's about having that conversation. It's really great to hear that um, forward thinking business like, such as yourself is considering that. And, and I think this uh, conversation leads to an important point, which is, you know, you and I probably spend more of our time looking at these sorts of things and discussing these sorts of issues around sustainability. Um, I don't know for you, but for myself, it feels like every time I think I've found something, got a fact, actually you find 20 other things that you weren't even thinking about. And yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's a phenomenally complicated topic. And, um, you know, part of what we want to do with BAM and, and being transparent is, is sort of, trying to help our consumers understand that a little bit more again not preaching to them but saying hey look you know these are the this is the complexity of what we're all having to deal with here um because you know in all honesty if i wasn't in the role that i'm in in the in the brand that i'm in my depth of knowledge would be you know a small percentage of what it current what it's grown to and therefore i you know i can kind of completely understand from a consumer point of view it's just confusing you know who do you believe what is good practice if I do this, if I buy this product, am I do, making the best decision? Yeah, it, it's going to be very difficult for someone who really positively wants to do the right thing um, to to know that unless they're investing huge amounts of time and effort in 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 educating themselves. And you know that 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 that's you know that's arduous. So I do think yeah. you know listening to our customers, you know, there's a huge expectation that that people businesses like ours will do the right thing. And that will enable them to shop with us in the knowledge that actually, you know, they are making a difference. And that's what mm. that's what we try to do. Yeah, totally. And we can see that where the messages are coming through, um, which is brilliant. And um, so, Ryan, what what's next for yourself? Where would you like to see BAM in the next 10 years? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Um, I mean, we sort of have this vision where we would like to, you know, we, we've set out our goals for, for 2030, the things we would like to achieve as a business and it all around, you know, our impact positive report. Um, yeah, we would love to think we could get to a position where we could genuinely say and claim and prove that every item of bamboo clothing that was bought from us had a positive impact on the planet. So looking, you yeah, know, this is where I come back to this regenerative, you know, Sustainability, in my simple mind, is about not making the current situation worse. Um, you know, the, the, the recent report from uh, the IPOC that, you know, we're sort of past that point. We've got to also think about how do we actually start to build things back and make ecosystems more robust. And and so, you know, whether it's 10 years from now, I'd love to be able to be in a position where I can, yeah, I can say to people, look, you know, buy, buying our products actually is good for the planet. We've got it all nailed. We're doing stuff that's regenerative, you know, and that that's that's the goal. Uh, it's a you know we're we're a long way off that, you know. I've, uh, uh, we sort of we probably know quite a bit of what we would have to do to achieve that, but some of the things aren't even available. You know, we're going to be reliant on technology uh, and new innovations in this space uh, to allow us to achieve that. And um, but that would be that would be where I'd like to see it. And um, you know, the other question I get asked quite often is, you know, how does growing a business, um, you know, uh, balance out with, you know, do it being sustainable? Is growth compatible with sustainability? And I suppose um, my, my answer to that so far is that, you know, in order to make a difference and make bamboo clothing more sustainable, it's going to take investment. Um, it's not you know, it's not something that other people are going to give us. Um, and so in order to, to to have that investment, we have to be growing. We have to be profitable. Um, and, we, you know, we choose to reinvest uh, a, a proportion of our profit each year 
uh, up to 10% or, or sometimes more of our profit um, back into initiatives that will drive that that sustainability. Um, you know, so so that's one reason why we would want to, you know, continue to grow the business because it's it's far easier to do these, you know, longer term initiatives if you've got a profitable business behind you. And then I suppose the other goal is if we, if we do get to the point where where our product our products are impact positive, you know, the more that people buy our clothes as an alternative to, you know, maybe synthetic based clothing, you know, it is it is better for the planet. And, and you know that's already the story, um, but you know, you know, so that that's that's where I would like to you know that's why I want to see BAM continue to grow, go beyond the UK as our main market, get this message out into international markets, um, yeah, and and really show people that there is a genuine way to continue clothing ourselves, but in a in a better way. Fantastic vision, I love that, Ryan. And and finally, here's the quick fire round. So I'll let you have your sip of water, get ready. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so how do you define sustainability? Uh, like I say, I think I touched on it. I think, you know, for me, sustainability is um, looking at the, uh, and I say carbon can be one thing, but looking at that broader topic of sustainability, the impact that our existence as a business and the actions that we take of a business have in the broadest sense on the planet and the people and the environment in which we're operating um but uh, you know as i touched on i think for me sustainability as a topic was about trying to reduce that impact or improve the quality of that impact i think we've now got to look beyond that and 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 like i say we would start to use the word regenerative in place of sustainability in terms of uh, our aim and so that's that's how i see it what are you most hopeful for? Yeah, I'm hopeful that all businesses, big and small, not just in the in the apparel sector, um, you know, take it as seriously as we have, um, and and like I say, come to the party with a collaborative mindset because I think only uh, you know uh, we'll achieve so much more together. Um, and, uh, you know, and we certainly are going to be reliant on a lot of other organizations and companies to get us to where we want to go. We might have the passion and the drive and be prepared to make the investment, but we're going to need others to, to help us get there. And finally, who inspires you? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, ironically, I think it's, it's not one person, um, but, you know, as someone who follows current affairs and is involved in business, I think my inspiration always comes from people who've had knockbacks and have, have then uh, turned that around and, and achieve. And that can be, you know, meeting someone who's maybe had mental health issues, who's got over it and done something fantastic with their life. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of sport. There's always an underdog in sport. There's always someone whose career has had to be reinvented. And that's where I, I take sort of I look at those it's very easy to look at really successful people and just say how did they get there um and 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 you can learn from that certainly um but I like to think I like to look at people who've maybe been through a little bit of adversity um and not taken the the natural route to where they've got to and and learn from sort of some of their uh their actions but also their attitude to how they've done it yeah totally true Ryan I've always wondered why um we do it naturally. It's about putting someone on a pedestal that's had success, success, and it's always like almost an overnight success, that sort of stuff. And we they get books written about them. But I always I find that you know I learn the most and can navigate this this world from learning from other people's failures and perhaps not how to do it. Yet we don't have you know any business books. It's like biggest failures and you know it's like people don't necessarily want to talk about it, but I find that we can learn the most from from as you say people's knockbacks people's people's other people's failures that are actually um, precursors to to their success yeah and I think like I say it's not just about the learning from the failure but it's it's what did what did they take from that that ultimately made them succeed and what was their response to that failure um that 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 ultimately led them to that success um, you know, not everyone who's successful has to have some sort of backstory that's uh, full of tragedy and, and failure. Um, and you can learn from people who who haven't been through that. But from an inspirational point of view, um, you know, those are the ones I think, yeah, you've you've gone that extra 
distance to achieve what you've achieved and and, and that's quite inspirational um mm. and and if you can learn from it as well fantastic thank you so much for speaking to me today ryan uh, could you please let our audience know where to find you and if they can join or collaborate with you uh, yep, we're. Uh, um, I mean, our website is bambooclothing.co.uk. Um, you'll also find us on Instagram, uh, Bam Clothing, um, and Facebook. Uh, and if you follow us through those three channels, you'll probably get, uh, you know, a good introduction to the brand and be kept up to date with what we're doing. Uh, and so, yeah, that's where you'll find us. Thank you so much, Ryan. Really appreciate it. And if any listeners out there, please do connect with Ryan and uh, follow Bam Bamboo Clothing. Uh, thanks again for today. Really appreciate it. Catch you very soon. Bye for now. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. You if you enjoyed my conversation with Ryan today, please like share and subscribe for more conversations. We go live every Friday and we look forward to having you join us next week. Have a wonderful weekend and bye for now.